Well, I didn't think they'd do it, but we just got a solo Crosshair episode. We didn't get to see any of the other members of Clone Force 99 other than Crosshair. And I gotta say, this episode was fantastic. The fact that we got to see Commander Cody, Clone Forces going against droids once again, and the music was just absolutely spectacular. And I just love how this episode follows a very similar formula to episodes 1 and 2. We get tons of fun action in the episode. Episode, and that action is followed up by some silent scenes and short but great commentary that gives this Star Wars animation show so much depth. The action starts when Crosshair and Commander Cody are sent to the planet Desix to rescue an Imperial officer. And I gotta say, looking back, this was absolutely a suicide mission. Commander Cody, Crosshair, and the clones that they're accompanied with are completely outnumbered by the droids defending the city. And if it wasn't for Crosshair's incredible abilities as a sniper, the clone unit along with Cody no doubt would have been completely wiped out during this attack. And you gotta think that's exactly what the Imperial Admiral Admiral Rampart wants, but more on that later. Despite the loss of clone lives throughout this episode, I did absolutely love seeing Commander Cody and Crosshair take on the various types of droids from the Separatist army, including improved droidicas and BX series commando droids. In the end, with many clone troopers sacrificing their lives, Crosshair and Cody are able to rescue the Imperial officer, of course all because Crosshair is able to make an absolutely crazy shot, which is able to take out the tactical droid controlling the planetary defenses. And certainly Obi-Wan Kenobi would be proud of Cody, he negotiates a peaceful release of the Imperial officer, to only have that Imperial officer turn around and order Commander Cody and Crosshair to shoot the governor that had peacefully released him. Cody, of course, is absolutely appalled by this, but Crosshair follows orders. And as great a scene as that is, the next one is absolutely fantastic. There's no dialogue, just this amazing haunting music, and we get to see the Imperial forces arriving on the planet, at which time it's pretty clear for us to see, as well as Commander Cody, that there are no other clone troopers coming to occupy this planet. It is all proto-storm troopers, really signaling that changing of the guards from clone troopers to these recruited TK soldiers, and this really reinforces the fact that Admiral Rampart sent in that clone unit on a suicide mission. That many of those clones, if not all of them, were supposed to die in this attack so that they could be simply replaced by stormtroopers. And at the end of the episode, Crosshair is called in for yet another mission and finds out that Commander Cody has gone AWOL, meaning that one of Crosshair's last friends left in the Empire has now left him just like Clone Force 99. In the end, I thought this was one of the best episodes of Star Wars animation ever. I liked it even better than episodes 1 and 2 of season 2 of The Bad Batch. But hey Star Wars fans, that's all the time I got for my review. Certainly lots more I could go into detail on, but I gotta get going. That all said, I'm Mike, and remember, the Force will be with you, always.